The Lord be with you. Well, we are continuing this conversation about uh, approaches to the Bible. Uh, There certainly seem to be a variety of ways that we can come to the Holy Scriptures, um, a variety of traditions about the right way or the wrong way to approach the Holy Scriptures. Uh, So we have been sort of investigating what is the Bible and uh, are there best practices and how to read it, uh, what to do with it, how to use it, uh, how it can be used for us to form us into the people that God would desire to have us to be. Uh, One of the things that we talked about in our last video, as we have been sort of working through this high-tech technology of uh, dry erase board, Uh, What ways do our lives and God's word intersect? And we said uh, maybe the the first way that the majority of us kind of approach the scriptures or get introduced to the scriptures is through this method of devotional reading. That is essentially reading things for us. Uh, What do I hear in the scriptures? What does it mean to me? How does it inform me directly? Uh, We also talked about how there are some limitations that come with that, some problems. Uh, It is possible to um, think that you are the central person of importance. Uh, That's primarily what you get out of it. Uh, And it is very disjointed uh, because you kind of pick up and drop off wherever you want in the text. Um, you probably never get a full, robust understanding of what is there. So maybe the next way of moving forward beyond that, deepening our ability to read Scripture and to get things out of the Bible, is I think a lot of us move from a devotional style reading to a content-focused reading, Uh, And by this, uh, these are primarily the the through-the-Bible type techniques. So it is interesting when you encounter certain scriptures, uh, especially in the life of Jesus, that you find him referring to different points in a broader scriptural narrative. So, for example, um, some people confront him and say, uh, you tell us. Rabbi, um, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife uh, for any and every reason? And Jesus essentially says to them, uh, have you not heard that in the beginning God made them male and female, and for this reason a man leaves his mother and father and becomes one flesh with his wife? In other words, uh, Jesus seems to think there is a beginning to this story, which is very interesting. In another place, um, Jesus is talking to people who are a little bit hypocritical and have a hard time believing him. And he says, um, you diligently search the scriptures because you believe in them, you have eternal life. But these same scriptures testify about me. Again, Jesus seems to think that there is a trajectory that this uh, Bible, these uh, holy writings are moving in a particular direction, pointing toward a particular end. And Jesus essentially says, at least for the sake of the Gospels, uh, that is me. I am the end of this story or the story up to this point. Uh, If that is true, there certainly seems to be some internal indications that um, there's an importance to looking at this as a story, a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a chronology to it, Uh, And therefore, there are things that knowing the story, knowing the story order, knowing the elements of the story can really help us. 
So uh, this is where you get a lot of these Bible study methods, like through the Bible, uh, read through the Bible in a year, read through the Bible in two years, whatever it is. Uh, those are there often to help you understand the whole story. Sometimes they go uh, from Genesis through Revelation. Uh, sometimes you are reading um, an Old Testament passage in the morning and a New Testament passage in the evening. Maybe the Psalms are sprinkled in in the afternoon. There are different methods to doing that. Uh, there's also this method of chronological reading. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have even uh, formatted chronological Bibles. Uh, and these are more focused on this is the order that things would have happened historically. There's some interesting questions with that about does it matter um, to, if you're reading something chronologically in a linear order or is there some spiritual value to the way that our Bibles are set up? Um, that's one question. Uh, some other things, though, that we get, uh, positive things, I think, is when you read the Bible for its content, when you read it to understand its overall story, uh, it can help us better understand where we are at in the story. So, for example, uh, we can come to the conclusion, hey, we're not ancient Israel. Uh, therefore, we need to not presume that everything that was said to them is 100% one-for-one uh, one applicable to us. Uh, hey, we are not yet um, in the time of uh, the, the Great Tribulation. Therefore, um, we need not read that 100% one-for-one of what is being said there directly 100% applies to us. Uh, it does have some value to know where you fall in the story so that you can better interpret uh, what you're supposed to be doing in the story. And it helps get off of that me-centered focus. You realize that you are in a long stream of salvation, this salvific narrative. Um, it is much broader than you. It is much bigger than you. You get swept up into it, yes, and therefore it has a great deal of value to you. Uh, but you aren't the end focal point, and there are going to be even more focal points beyond you, beyond your time here. Sometimes it's good to have a bigger perspective. Does that mean that this way, this content reading way, is superior to uh, the devotional style of reading, and or does it mean that there are no problems with just reading for content? And again, the answer is absolutely not. This way also can pose some problems. It corrects some problems, uh, and then it imposes some other problems. So some of the problems that we get in just reading for content's sake is you can kind of devalue other parts of the scriptures, uh, especially the First Testament, the so-called Old Testament, these Hebrew scriptures, uh, because you are not an Israelite, you can very well say, hey, you know what, that First Testament has little to no value for me whatsoever. Um, I'm not living in that story, and therefore uh, I don't need to know an awful lot about that. We can also get to the place where um, story itself um, can create sort of a false idea. We can compare it with, with other stories, stories that move us, stories that motivate us, stories that inspire us, but have no real binding or grounding within actual reality. So, for example, uh, we can read lots of tales Lots of fairy tales, lots of fables, lots of myths, uh, even modern day thrillers or science fiction dramas. Uh, those can stir us and move us to do things and to change things and to maybe even be better people. But if we're saying that the Bible functions exactly the same way as any other story, 
And that's all its value is, regardless of whether it's real or not, regardless of whether it's true or not. Uh, it's just there to inspire us to be better people. That is a huge glaring problem, and I would say a huge misuse, uh, maybe even a sacrilegious use of uh, using the scriptures. And the same thing with that devaluing thing. You know, I have seen traditions uh, who have said, you know what, you don't read the First Testament. You don't even need the First Testament anymore because that part of the story is done and gone. Uh, I've seen other traditions that would say, you don't need the Gospels anymore either because since the Holy Spirit came, that's when the church was birthed. And everything during this church age is all that's important right now. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful if our way of reading devalues the very book uh, and the very story that we are reading. So how do we get better at that? Um, how do we not allow the content of the story to make us only focus on the little part that seemingly is where we're at. How do we hold it all together? How do we keep the importance of all of it? Uh, and how do we, in the same time, balance what a story is with um, what its connection to reality is? And to answer that question, we're going to have to wait for the next installment in this video series. So until then, happy reading. Uh, may you be blessed by the story. And may the peace of God be with you. Amen.